The Verge's Ash Parrish admits her Sweet Baby Inc. defense piece ignores how company employees called for harassment. Quote, including this detail makes it seem like the inciting incident is on equal footing with what happened next. This story comes to us from Spencer Bakuli over at Bounding Into Comics. In delving deeper into this issue, it's crucial to understand the context surrounding Sweet Baby Inc. and the events that have transpired. The gaming community has been no stranger to controversy. But what sets this particular incident apart is the involvement of a supposed journalist like Ash Parrish and her questionable handling of this particular situation. Let's start by examining Sweet Baby Inc. itself, the center of this mess. This company, often described as a narrative consultation firm, has been at the center of various debates within the gaming industry. Some view them as a necessary addition to the creative process, providing valuable insight into storytelling and character development. Others, however, see them as unnecessary intermediaries injecting ideology into video games and stifling creative freedom. That would be you and me. The controversy surrounding Sweet Baby Inc. came to a head when a Steam user named Cabruto, a Brazilian, by the way, a Brazilian man, created a Steam curator page called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. The purpose of this page was to track games that Sweet Baby Inc. had been involved with. While this may seem innocuous at first, it sparked a series of events that re would reveal deeper tensions within the gaming community. What Ash Parrish's article failed to mention, however, was the catalyst for the controversy. It wasn't Cabruto's creation of the Steam Curator page that set things off, but rather a response from a Sweet Baby Inc. staff member, Chris Kindred, a staff writer for Sweet Baby Inc. took to social media to call for his followers to mass report both the Steam Curator page and its creator, Cabruto. This call for mass reporting was seen by many as an attempt to silence criticism and suppress dissenting voices within the gaming community. Parrish's article glosses over the cru this crucial detail, instead framing the controversy as an attack on Sweet Baby Inc. by reactionary gamers. By omitting Kindred's role in instigating the situation, Parrish effectively skewed the narrative in favor of Sweet Baby Inc. and portrayed them as victims of bigotry and harassment. While confronted about this omission, when confronted about this omission, Parrish's response was both dismissive and defensive. She attempted to justify Kindred's actions as a necessary as a necessary response to harassment, conveniently ignoring that it was his own behavior that escalated the situation in the first place. Her refusal to acknowledge this crucial detail only served to further erode her credibility as a journalist. And we have right here what she thinks about these people. It's uh, it's just right here. And bang, this is what she thinks about Cabrutus. She says Cabrutus. This is from her messages, by the way, explaining her, her thought process. This is Ash Parrish saying, Cabrutus and his ilk have a grievance against Sweet Baby Inc. that is rooted in racism and misogyny and has no basis in the reality of how video game development work. That's it, period. Mm -hmm. This is an adult woman, right? Trying to talk about in a very, very, very controversial situation that has really been only like exacerbated by the staff members of this company. It's, it's astonishing. It really is. But here we go. We'll continue on. Her refusal to acknowledge this crucial detail only served to further erode her credibility as a journalist. Parrish's article didn't just fa fail to provide an accurate account of the events. It effectively perpetuated a false narrative that served to shield Sweet Baby Inc. from criticism. This type of biased reporting not only does a disservice to the gaming community, but also undermines the integrity of journalism as a whole. In the aftermath of this article's publication, Paris chose to lock her Twitter account, effectively silencing any further discussion of criticism. This move only further fueled speculation about her motives and raised questions about her commitment to transparency and accountability as a journalist. By weaponizing accusations of harassment and bigotry, companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and their allies in the media are able to deflect legitimate criticism and silence dissenting voices. This creates a chilling effect within the gaming community where developers and content creators may feel pressured to conform to a certain ideological agenda for fear of facing similar backlash. How about that? Hmm? How about that? 
As consumers of media, it's imperative we remain vigilant and critically evaluate the information presented to us. We cannot afford to blindly accept the narratives that are spoon-fed to us by biased and agenda-driven sources. Instead, we must demand transparency, accountability, and integrity from journalists and media outlets alike. In conclusion, this controversy surrounding Sweet Baby Inc. is going to continue to explode. Ash Parrish's article on The Verge highlights a greater need for scrutiny and accountability within the gaming industry and journalism as a whole, because what we're looking at right here is the fantastic hive mind we hear about all the time, the woke mind virus, right? A target is identified and everybody gets the idea that they need to attack. All that hive mind, like the Borg, goes after that identified target indefinitely, forever, forever. And you know what happens when these people get called out? Like, we're, it's no secret who Sweet Baby Inc. is anymore. We've got them all over the place declaring what they're actually about, what the purpose of their involvement is, and it's really to wring out anything you'd want to be interested in as a game because what it wants to do is self-insert these writers from Sweet Baby Inc. The, crea the, the owner of the company says that this is what she does. This is like the, the chief like motivating factor of her being a creative writer is to self-insert herself into this stuff. Who wants to play a video game about some schlubby weirdo in California? I don't. I want to play cool video games about Aloy, the, late, the, the re resurrected uh, daughter of the creator of the end of the world, you know? Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. I want to play things like Minecraft, that where I make up the story. It's just fun to go around and build blocks, screw around, have fun with your friends, go on dungeon adventures, that kind of thing. That's it. It's not hard to make a video game people enjoy. Look at Helldivers 2. You know, and come to find out, by the way, that through Sweet Baby Inc. connected to Take This, don't worry, there'll be a link to the articles explaining this down in the description. Don't worry about it. But in connection to Sweet Baby Inc., that came to defense of them is Take This, who was funded by the Homeland Security, by Office of Homeland Security here in the United States, right? So DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, is funding these people that are going around, twisting narratives, changing all this stuff, and then funding the defense of private companies that are picking up the baton, the Black Rock baton, and changing behaviors. Changing behaviors, that's right. Reprogramming media to change behaviors. That's what they're up to. That's what this is all about. That's why everybody's coming out of the woodwork to protect these people. They're part of a greater effort to change behaviors. Just give me a video game, dude. That's all you got to do. The fun thing we learn is that in Helldivers 2 and all these other great games that are coming out, you know, if you plug up too many bug holes in Helldivers 2, you could end up being labeled a terrorist. That's right. The U.S. government could label you a terrorist because, I don't know, you plugged those bug holes too hard. You Minecrafted too hard. You went out and you, you played Pal World too hard. I don't know. I don't know what their logic is. But that's what's going on. Don't worry, there'll be a link down to it down in the description, like I said. So if you're interested, check down there. I'll leave the link for you. But that's what you're looking at right now. That's what you're looking at. These people, are, Ash is going out and saying, oh, it's not Sweet Baby Inc.'s fault. Instead of going and telling people that, by the way, the federal government is labeling people terrorists because they play video games. Hello? <laughs> I, I don't know what planet I'm on. I just want the stupid to stop.